You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. All right. Well, uh, we are here on an impromptu edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Tamar, thanks for making the time for us uh, on what I know is a pretty exciting and busy day for you, man. Yes, sir. No problem. So, look, I, you know, you came to Indiana to play in big games like this. You know, about to experience your first NCAA tournament game. Just what? What's it like? What have the last forty-eight hours been like for you and the team? Well, I mean, first of all, uh, when I seen when well, we all saw our name like pop up, whether it was going to be like just a, we we were, whatever C we were a play in game, you know, it was obviously excitement at that point. But then, you know, the next day it's like, okay, it is what it is. You know, the committee made a decision. That was business. You know, we got a, we got a game to go in. And then for me, it's like, this is the, it's like, I'm living a dream for real. It's like all my life I've, I was grown up watching March Madness. Just a couple months ago, I was making brackets, right? (laughs) For like four March match to see who I think was gonna win, and now I'm in it. So it's just like it's a it's, it's a great feeling just to know that you know the bat the, the basketball like brought me this far, all the way to like to something I've always dreamt about playing in. Absolutely. What so you know you talked about you know selection Sunday. You guys are waiting to see. Take us inside the room. Like what was the feeling? Because I know a lot of the public statements. You guys were confident. Was there any, was there nervousness? Is it the show kind of wore on? You didn't see like what, what was the vibe in that room? Like, I mean, it wasn't really nervousness. It was just like more so anticipation. Like guys was like, okay, I think we're going to fall right here. And then it was a different school. So it was like, dang, like, but so it, it, it was kind of funny to me just like, cause everybody was like just holding their breath for a second. And then it wasn't us. So it was like, it, it, it yeah. So I would say it was more so just like anticipation, like just trying to figure out, you know, where he was going to land. But, you know, when we did, but it, it was like the, the energy in the room was, it was great just because it's been a little minute since we've been to the tournament and knowing that our name was about to get called. It's like, it's, it's just a great feeling for the whole program. Yeah. So let's reflect just for a few minutes about the Big Ten tournament. Uh, um, and you guys went in there with a lot riding on it and you came through when you needed to, you know, and you specifically, you know, I know you didn't get to play a lot of minutes, but you came in there in the Iowa game and stepped up and hit a huge three. You know, you guys were up three at the time that, you know, that three pointer extended the lead to six. Kind of talk about your mindset, you know, in a tournament setting like that, you got games back to back to back. How do you stay focused and ready so that when your name gets called, you're ready to step up and hit a big shot like that? Well, I mean, the the team, like philosophy or just like the vibe around our team is that no matter what minutes you get, you know, you got to be ready because it's like you're going to be out there and we need more positive things going on, like then things that like just more things that help us win the game. Like whatever minutes we play, you know, we want those to help us win the game. So for me, I mean, Coach Wilson, like on the way into the huddle, he told me stay ready. So I'm like, I got you. Like I'm ready. I'm locked in. Like, so, you know, my name was called. I'm like, okay, I got to go do something with this minute 51. I got I got to make something shake. So. I mean, it, it's really just about staying ready and, 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 you know, the guys that, like, that are in the game or when we're over there, like, on the bench, like, with unmatched energy, it's like we, we always make sure, you know, we're ready and, you know, we're constantly talking. So, I mean, it's just a reflection of everybody in our locker room, you know, and, you know, what, what we really try to um, showcase as, like, our kind of our identity, just, like, no matter who's out there, they're going to do something for the team. You know, what we've learned about you in, in the short time that, you know, that you've been a Hoosier is you're obviously confident. You're obviously a playmaker. How do you balance, you know, when you know that you might not get a lot of time, how do you balance, you know, kind of trying to want to play within the system and want to take what the game gives you with also, I know, wanting to go out there and make plays, but not force it. Like, how do you find that right balance for contributing as much as you can, but, but not going out there and just hunting shots and, and overdoing it. Man, it really kind of presents itself. Like, cause it's like, like going to game, I gotta, like my, I've been sitting for a little minute. So like I gotta try and I gotta get going on defense first. Like that, that's, how, that's how I get loose. Like when I first get into the game, 
So yeah. like I'm not really too focused on like getting a shot up immediately as soon as I get in. But you know, on the offensive end, we've been our offense has been, you know, getting a lot better, like our pace. So, you know, things are opening up for everybody and guys are starting to figure out where our shots are gonna come from. So it, it's really just letting the game come to me. Like it, like whenever you know I do get in, because it's like it'll 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 present itself just like you know, they, they went two, three zone, slide down, wide open shot. So that, that, that's pretty much it. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or marketer, you know how much your messaging matters. Bob Knight said, all of us learn to write in the second grade. Most of us go on to do greater things. And coaches write about some writing, but not copywriting. The kind of writing that grows your business through memorable messaging and marketing. Any business can dominate the competition and win big with a world-class copywriter crafting time-saving and money-making emails, landing pages, ads, and more for you. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is one of the world's best, and he lends his talents to small businesses. Clay is an IU alum and an award-winning writer whose words have been trusted by Marvel, Slim Jim, Petco, and many other household names. After getting sick of helping the rich get richer, he left corporate copywriting to focus on helping small businesses grow. If your business could benefit from stronger messaging, then contact Clay at clay at speakeasysalescopy.com. And as a listener of the show, you can sample his proven playbook of million-dollar messaging secrets for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop for more. That's speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop. This could be your banner year, and your copy is the X Factor. Contact Clay at Speakeasy Sales Copy today. You know, things obviously looked bleak there at the start of the second half against Michigan. You guys go down by 17. How would you describe what changed from that point on that obviously led you to win that game and then carry forward with two really good performances against Illinois and Iowa? Well, the, the team as a whole, we just stayed the course. And I feel like when JG, when he checked in, he he picked up the intensity defensively like that. That changed the whole game around. But I would more so say just our huddles. Like when it, every time it was a timeout, you know, all the guys that, that weren't playing and even the guys that were playing, like we still, it's like the, the energy was still at a high level. You know, we were still telling each other, you know, we, we, we can still win this game. Like, so. You know, just keep chipping away. Don't like, don't try and get it back in one. I mean, it was really just us staying together. We didn't, we didn't fall apart like in any area. So it, it was really just, you know, the, I, I feel like, you know, every time out, like it's like we telling each other, like, okay, it's 12 minutes left. We got to have this down to nine by nine minutes. And then we got it down to eight by 10 minutes. So, okay, we're working with something. So it's really just like having goals and then, you know, sticking to them. Yeah. So, you know, now you guys are playing in the first four. You've had a quick turnaround. You know, you played Saturday. You find out what you're going to be doing on Selection Sunday. And here we are Tuesday, you know, and there's a game coming in, in five or six hours. I know you got to go here pretty quick because you got to get to dinner. What has the preparation been like uh, for this Wyoming team that you guys have coming up tonight? Well, we were able to get a practice in and, you know, just a lot of film. And, you know, we just come down to our mental focus because, you know, as these games come, or just like in the tournament, like it's like we, it's not like we can go to the court and practice. You know, we in a hotel ballroom, so it's just you know a lot of uh, mental focus. Really, the preparation for them isn't any different than it is any other team, but it's just like you know, obviously it's more right on the game. Considering like it's one and done, like we don't get to say, oh, okay, we lost this, and we get to go play again. So it's like it's, it's just a lot of. Uh, focus coming into it. everybody's locked in yeah what are some of the unique challenges that you think they're going to present tonight i mean uh, i feel like we've seen like pretty much every defense considering like what trace brings in the interior and then the, the guards that we have on the perimeter so i feel like like we've seen every defense i don't know like what exactly they'll try to you know hit us with but you know, we'll adjust and, you know, play the game accordingly to whatever they choose to do, however they decide to guard us. So, You know, one of the things that we've seen over the last few weeks, and especially at the Big Ten tournament, you know, is Xavier just playing unbelievable at the point guard position and Trace, 
you know, having maybe five of his best halves of basketball, you know, in the big tournament. What have you seen from those two guys? What's it been like watching up close as they kind of fully realize their potential together, you know, both individually and, you know, as a pick and roll combination? I feel like with them two, it was just like, that was our big hand tournament. It was like our last, like, opportunity to, like, it was our last opportunity to get in the tournament. Like, our back was against the wall. They knew that. They knew they would be playing into the minutes, and we would need them to, we need them to play well to get there, so. I mean, it, it was just a different look in AI and just a different approach to the game. And they're a lot more vocal. And you could tell that, like, it was something that they really wanted to um, accomplish, which was winning those games. Like, we wanted to win the whole tournament. But it was, like, just the demeanor that they brought and the, the focus that they had, it just trickled down the line, like, for everyone else. Yeah. Now, you know, are you, we talked a couple episodes ago about, you know, kind of your pregame routine, you know, and how the biggest difference for you between being at home and being on the road is how that can sometimes, you know, get interrupted a little bit. Are you able to kind of go through your full pregame routine uh, here in Dayton, even with the quick turnaround and, and everything that you guys have going yeah. on? Yeah, I can still, like my routine can still be the same, but like, but like what I more so like try to do is like, even if my routine changes, like the approach is still the same all the time so but but i've still been able to do a lot of the same thing that i usually do before the game yeah that's good support for the inside scoop is also presented by home field apparel the presenting sponsor for the back home network and our friends at home field apparel they have the widest and most extensive collection of vintage iu apparel that you will find anywhere and as i'm sure you've come to know it's not just iu they started with iu stuff and the bison logo that kind of took everybody by storm and they just did a brand refresh so they keep adding to their iu collection but they're also adding other schools like crazy they have i think 120 schools now and so as you're looking to shop for yourself and for the iu fan in your life or even folks who didn't go to indiana home field apparel is the place to go for excellent fitting ridiculously comfortable washable vintage gear that really makes a statement uh, about your fandom and so go to homefieldapparel.com use the promo code home h-o-m-e to get 15 percent off your first order that's homefieldapparel.com promo code h-o-m-e now back to the inside scoop so hey we saw uh, coach woodson posted a video earlier today of him draining like an 18 19 foot shot the old man still got it is there anybody on the team who can beat him in a game of horse because i know he can't move on around very much but he can still on shoot the team <laughs> yeah like on um i mean i gotta throw myself in there um i would say because <laughs> he, he gonna shoot a lot of middies mm -hmm. so i would say probably i could throw race in there jg like the guys that shoot those 18 footers he's not gonna he's not gonna shoot too many threes Horse. Yeah, because he didn't play bank. with the three point line, so he, yeah, did, he never had to go out that far. Yeah, a few bank shots. So, like Grace, JG, Rob. Yeah, I get guys that shoot more of those like mid range shots, like X, like the pull ups, like all that stuff. So, I, yeah, I was like, just the guys that play in that area. Yeah. You know, and this is probably the last question because I know you got to get out of here. You know, this has been a season of, you know, we've talked a lot kind of about slaying demons in a sense, you know, like we hadn't beaten Purdue in a while. You guys beat Purdue. Hadn't done anything in the Big Ten tournament. You do that. Hadn't make the NCAA tournament. You, you did that. Have you kind of felt that weight as the season has gone along? And and what does it feel like now to have a comp? I know you guys have a lot of goals still in front of you, but to have accomplished, you know, so many of the things that at least for fans that we looked at as the big check marks. And I assume, you know, for you guys internally were big check marks too. Um, I mean, it, it I mean it feels good like checking those boxes off and you know, knowing that we, you know, did something, but it's just like it's not really a, a shot because it's like we made the goals for a reason because it's like we that's what we expect to do. Like we expect to, you know, win games and make the tournament. So, you know, after we check them off, it's like now what's next? Like now, now we got to, you know, continue to keep building. You know, we can't take any steps backwards. So, I mean, for us, we're just trying to continue to keep playing good basketball and, you know, staying staying together. You know, being one out there on the court. So 
feel like it's been working really well for us. Have you guys talked at all about, you know, other teams that have gone from the first four and, and had long runs? Obviously, UCLA did it last year. VCU did it before. Is that an example that has been brought up for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we like, we see it. And again, so, so of course, like, we, we talk about it all the time. Like, and even, like, like UConn, they were in the first four, but, like, that 11-game win, sure, like, we'll talk about that. So, just, like, we know, like, it can be done. So, again, like, it's like, how come, how come we can't? Like, why? Like, I don't see, I don't see why not. Like it's it's wide open for anybody. So and we're trying to take it one game at a time. It is. Well, hey man, I'm gonna let you go. I know you got to get to dinner. Really appreciate you coming on. I am gonna send you a text message later today, wishing you luck because we got to keep that string going since you guys yes, have played well every time we've done that in the pregame. But uh, good luck, man. You guys have earned this opportunity, and we can't wait to watch you guys play. And hope you get in there and are able to uh, to make your contributions and, and go get a W tonight, man. Yes, I appreciate you. Cool. Wish everyone luck for us tomorrow. Got gotcha. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Right. Yeah. And that will do it for this edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Thank you for being here and for listening and for sharing. If you're enjoying these episodes, make sure that you share it with another IU fan who you think might enjoy it. Uh, thanks to Tamar for coming and always being so well-prepared uh, and candid with his answers, really giving us a lot of insight as we go through this season. Thank you to our sponsors, Speakeasy Sales Copy, the presenting sponsor for the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Make sure that you go to speakeasysalescopy.com to see how Clay can help you drive more results to your business and our friends at Homefield Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. You can go to homefieldapparel.com, use the promo code HOME, H O M E, for 15% off your entire order. And thank you to Bob Thompson for creating the theme song for the Inside Scoop. Appreciate you being here and listening. Share it far and wide if you're enjoying it. And we will talk to you on the next episode of the Inside Scoop.